What is up guys, Mac of East Speed coming at ya. Absolutely frigid morning here on the Northern California range. But you know what? There's no place I'd rather be bringing you a great episode like this one. The Dragon Claw hasn't been too often seen on my channel and I think today's a great day to go ahead and try and fix that. I've got some awesome 245 grain slugs that I want to go ahead and sight this new shotgun style optic in with from Flexoma Precision Pellets. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this guy sighting in a shotgun style optic with slugs? It's because Texoma has gone ahead and outdone themselves once again, leading the way with shot shells in the air gunning community by bringing out some 50 caliber shot shells, guys. Now, I was very, very, very excited when these hit my PO box, and I cannot wait to share them with you today. Let's check them out. Now, Air Venturi actually did design some shot shells for the Dragon Claw platform itself and the wing shot as well. This is Texoma Precision Pellets offering. Very interesting design. I'm completely fascinated by air shotguns at this point, and even these smaller shells with the number four buckshot, God, these are really cool to me. So before I go ahead and get accused of not being accurate with these shells, I do want to prove that I can be accurate with some actual slugs. Let's get right into it, guys. Now, unfortunately, I have not yet actually fixed the breech seal that uh, failed on me the last time I had this on the channel, but I still think it's gonna be good to go. Probably should show you what these slugs look like too. These are the 245s from Texoma. These are specifically marketed to go in the M50. All right, let's see what we can do. First shot, huh? Green dot. I did laser bore sight this in the backyard. Can't shoot this in my backyard, obviously, but I did laser bore sight this, so we should be relatively close. Let's see what happens on that big board. About two inches high, 593 on the velocity with a 245 grain slug. Let's go again, see if we can't group it. really good. 5.86 on the velocity and with no magnification I can already see that I'm putting together a pretty respectable group down there. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use that information that I have and adjust with what I got at this point and uh, see if I can't get over on the gongs. I've got some Christmas gongs for you guys today so now that we've kind of seen that we're on target let's at least make it a little bit festive since I'm already freezing in the season here. Realistically guys, that's not that bad. With a red dot style optic and my skills, that's just not that bad. Let's move over to these gongs. Red and green for Christmas, baby. All right. Dot's still looking good. Let's load it before we cock it like an intelligent human being. trying to just keep myself moving out here. It's like 26 degrees, so that if I could just stay in motion, I won't freeze and die. <sighs> Big one first. Nothing. Oh, we have to cock it, don't we? Good. Ooh, I have to decock it now. I hate I hate cocking this before I load it. It's a big safety risk, right? Get a few more shots out of it, see if we can connect with the smaller gongs. Get that steel swinging and ringing. It's pretty good. This is this is the quintessential big bore for a reason. This shit just connects, and that kind of energy is undisputable. Also, as far as air gunning is concerned, it's all about the smiles per gallon. And right now, it's ear to ear. So the level of enjoyment is through the roof on this platform. I really do like this one. This is the, the uh, same Dragon Claw that Edmund Leong gifted me all those months ago, all those years ago, and it's still in service today. Edmund, if you're out there, brother, thank you very much. Still to this day, thank you very much, man. <sighs> Whew, 
crippling the rack and just hitting with authority. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. I don't want to waste too much air charge and I don't want to waste too much of your precious time in the holiday season. I think I'm going to go right to the shot shells for you guys and see what we do with the incremental distances with this new round from Texoma. All right, guys, we're all top back up to that maximum fill level the Dragon Claw allows us here at 200 bar. We are 100% ready to go with our shot shells, and we're at the 10 yard mark. I absolutely can't wait to get into this with you guys and see exactly what we're going to do patterning wise with these new Texoma shot shells. Texoma Precision Pellet has really been leading the way this last year as far as advancing the technology of shot shells for air gunners in general. I am happy to do this testing for you guys, and I can't wait to see what happens. Happens. First thing we need to really check here is can my fat fingers pull them out of the styrofoam? No, that's not what we need to check. We need to check do they fit the breech well? Do they fit the breech well? Which way do I put these in? I'm going to be counterintuitive with these guys, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have the uh, wad, wad end facing forward in this little suppository end towards myself, towards the rear of the rifle. Does it go in there? Oh, it does go in there. Hell, look at that. Decent fit, too. All right. Let's make this thing dangerous and it makes noise. Fire. That worked good as hell. I forgot my ears, but look at that. Oh, that worked good as hell. Holy shit. Shockingly well. I'm like blown away, look at that. The whole center target basically caught the entire load of bird shot with almost no bird shot anywhere around the exterior. Dude, I'm very impressed. I think I should switch over to these 12 by 12s and then go ahead and scoot it back just a little bit further and see what kind of results I get at different distances. That's pretty good. That's shockingly good. I didn't expect it to do so well. I mean, I popped one in, there was a couple birds sitting up there. <laughs> I'm a puss. I'm a puss. I can't kill for no reason. All right, guys. One question I definitely want to answer for you before I move this back to the 15 and 20 yard distances is based on the fact that I flipped this around backwards, will I have a different result if I use this as a traditional bullet shaped projectile? Only thing I can do is test it for you guys. I don't know anybody else who has these, so I'm pretty much the only person answering the questions. Let's get right into it. All right, round side forward this time. They slide in much easier when you go round side forward. For whatever reason, they slide in easier that way. Maybe physics. Left side, fire. That didn't work at all. I've, I've literally made no changes. This has absolutely got me flabbergasted. Let's go ahead and uh, try it the original way that I did with the wad facing forward, the little cup facing forward. I see, I see a couple little tiny holes there, but... Not like that. Oh, no, not like that. No. All right, let's see. I think you have the right idea. I might, I might. You know, when you're dealing with experimental stuff, sometimes you gotta try off the wall stuff. All right, guys, so it seems like Having this flat side forward definitely made a big difference as far as my patterning. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple of shots, both on the left and the right, with the cup forward and see if we get better patterning. <sighs> left side, fire. Well, I know I'm on target. But for whatever reason, that one didn't fragment either. It's like I'm doing experimentation here, but I don't know what to make of my data. If you guys know what's happening, throw it down, please. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to shoot this until we have a better understanding of the total picture. Go ahead and once again, use the flat side forward and hit that right side target.
Fire. That one worked like gangbusters. What was the difference? I mean, sh Shooter Steve, do you see anything that I'm not seeing? Because I feel like I made no f***ing changes whatsoever. Physics. Physics, that's it, that's it. There we go, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and try and pepper the left side like I just peppered the right side, because if I got the right side every time, that's, like, amazing. That's clay killer. Okay, okay, here we go. Very interesting. Once again, flat side forward here. Okay. Fire. Same exact ammunition, completely different result. I just don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this. I'm gonna go ahead and fire again. Why not, right? Let's get as much data as we possibly can. Fire. See, that one once again worked killer. I don't understand. It's crazy guys, that one worked almost perfectly once again. I don't know what the difference. Maybe it's shell thickness, maybe it's like, you know, the, the, the phases of the moon. I don't know what it is, but I'm getting all over the board results from these shot shells from Texoma Precision Pellets. Some of them are working incredible. Some of them seem to act like a slug. I got one more treat for you guys today before we go ahead and pack this episode up, and it's some XL shells. Same company that makes the rest of them tick some precision pellets. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, check this out. I've got some super XL shot shells, and I've only got a few of them, but I do want to go ahead and burn them up on the range with you guys today. These are too long to fit in the Dragon Claw breech, and they have to be muzzle loaded 100%, but these are some bad ass shells. Let's get up on that big paster and see if we can't just make a mess of it at 10 yards. I really want to see if these fragment a little bit more predictably than their smaller cousins, and see if we can't get that consistent result that shot gunners are looking for in the air gun community. Alright. So I can see, so I can hear. Protect the hearing. Good to go. Okay, this is gonna be actually a lot more simple than the uh, the shorter ones because all I gotta do is go like this with it. I think it's in there. It didn't work as anticipated, but it kind of did. Kind of did. Not cocked? Okay. That one went all the way down. That one worked a lot better. The first one may not have sank all the way home. I can hear him hitting the ground. That's good. That's good. I can hear him hitting all the way back here. Maybe that's why they're working. Working good. Ooh, no, no. There it goes. A little bit of a funny sound on the report there, and this is my pressure reading, guys. I've only got a couple of more shells, and I do want to use them up. Let's see what happens if we hit a gong. Give this thing the old Minuteman special. And fire. That sounded fairly similar to those first slugs that we got sighted in on this morning, which points to, once again, maybe just kind of a hit and miss patterning with the shot shells in this case. It's a great, Great idea, and the theory can be expanded to an even more effective level. But I definitely think there needs to be a little bit more consistency as far as this iteration is concerned before it's considered a successful commercial product. Jim at Texoma Precision Pellets, you're on the right track, brother. Even if you fall on your face, you fell six feet forward, and you are pushing shotgunning forward in leaps and bounds in the air gunning community. Can't thank you enough for sending this in, and I can't wait to see what you come out with in the next year. 
This has been an absolutely great place to go ahead and end today's episode, but if you liked today's episode, give it a thumbs up. You want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more. With that notifications button so you can stay current on the videos as well as when these videos come out. If you really like this content, make sure you share it so that somebody else can see it. And I'll catch you boys in the next one.